Hi there, Mystery Baker here. Hope you're all doing well. Today's tutorial is going to show you how to make this very simple but absolutely delicious apple crumble. Traditional and British, why not? And um, those who love apple pie will love this. Um, and to be fair, if you're not very good at pastry, a crumble is a fantastic substitute. And I'll be totally honest, I think apple crumble, especially this recipe, it's far superior to apple pie. So give this a try. So we're going to quickly run through the, the ingredients. You'll need an apple pie tip dish, and I've got this nice dish, okay, because I don't do small portions. This is for the family, you know, no messing about. So you'll need a pie dish. You'll need eight ounces or 200 grams of self-raising flour. You'll need four ounces or 100 grams of butter. But this is actually margarine. I'm using stock margarine. And it's an absolute fantastic substitute to butter, especially in, if you're struggling getting hold of it. Um, it. It works great with the crumble, so don't panic. It's not the wrong medium. It's brilliant. And in this bowl, you can use 400 or 100 grams of just regular sugar. But in I've mixed it up. I've got two ounces of... Um, caster sugar you can use granulated and two ounces of brown sugar as well because I think the brown sugar or muscovado um, sugar it adds a real depth to your crumble okay and you'll also need half a teaspoon of cinnamon but that's optional so here we go let's get let's get started shall we so we first of all we add our flour eight ounces of self-raising flour to our bowl I hope that's picking up and what we do at this point is we add our butter or marge I'm just gonna stick that in break it up and stick that in pop that in <laughs> don't be shy now just get it in there <laughs> this particular recipe the, the apple crumble stems from the World War II and I think it was because of the rationing and obviously baking products were a little bit like today, which is perfect for why I'm making it today, isn't it? Because baking products were on ration, in fact, all food was on ration in World War II, and we're having the same problems getting certain products. The crumble was a much better way to make a good hearty dessert because it didn't need as much fat. Okay, so... We've got that in there. And I'm just coating my my uh, butter with the flour to start with. It's easier that way. And then with your fingers, we're using the rubbing method. And we're going to rub through our fingers. Can you see? Using, We're going to rub that butter through to make our crumble. We're making breadcrumbs. It's, it's got to look like breadcrumbs. So I'll do this off camera. So basically just rubbing it and lifting. And what we're doing is we rubbing that fat into the flour to create breadcrumbs. So I'll keep doing this off camera until it's all done. And then I'll come back. Okay, so I've basically rubbed all of the fat into the flour. And as you can see, it does resemble breadcrumbs. Nice and light and fluffy. And the last part of the crumble anyway, is you take your sugar. Now I've mixed it up. I add brown and, and white together. I think the brown sugar just adds a little bit of almost a deep nuttiness to the crumble. Okay, now you can add all sorts to your crumble. You don't have to leave it like this. But I'm making a traditional recipe. We're going back to World War Two here. Although I doubt they would have had brown sugar. They'd have just used granulated sugar. <laughs> but I'm just saying that the brown sugar does add an extra richness. However, just adding caster sugar or, or granulated, regular granulated sugar is just as good. And I've mixed that through so that the brown and the white are mixed through. And at this stage, I add half a teaspoon, and as I say, it's optional, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, just to give it that va va voom okay? And again, I mix that through. 
This is great at Christmas as well, adding a bit of cinnamon. You can not put the cinnamon in, you can leave it out, but it is so yummy, I can promise you that. So half a teaspoon is all you need. Don't put too much in, especially with using the brown sugar. So to finish off your crumble, all you do is you add your sugar, add your sugar, and then with a metal spoon, you just incorporate your sugar to your crumb mixture. Make sure it's done properly and it's mixed in thoroughly. With a light hand, don't press down and make a dough. You want to keep it light. And when it's all that's incorporated, like that, your crumble is ready and you can set that aside. And I'll do that, put the kettle on, and when we come back, we'll tackle the apples, which is just as easy as the crumble. I'll be right back. Okay, okay, so I've peeled and chopped and cored my apples and I've I've got them here. As I say, cooking apples, you'll need two large ones. It's usually a pound in weight. If, like me, I'm using Granny Smiths, which have a nice sharpness to them and they also hold their shape in the baking process, you'll need about four, but still a pound in weight when they're peeled. So just wear them peeled on your scales, it's usually around about four medium sized apples or two large cooking apples. It doesn't have to be accurate. A little bit over doesn't matter. But anyway, there's my apples done. And what I'm going to do now is I've got four and a half ounces um, of sugar. Now you can use a mixture of granulated and brown, but I haven't got a lot of brown sugar left now that I've used it for my topping. So I'm just using regular sugar here, granulated sugar, four and a half to five ounces. And I'm going to add to that two heat tablespoons of cornstarch, corn flour. And I'm going to give that a good mix through because what this will do is the corn flour will thicken your sauce. So as in the baking process, the apples will release the sugars and juices okay and you don't want it watery so the corn flour kind of thickens it up okay so once you've done that you can bring your bowl over and we can start adding the apple okay just pop, pop just chuck it in <laughs> chuck it in it'll all go down oh i haven't done that bit i'll do that now as I say, there's bits I've missed. I'm, I'm kind of rushing this, but it's rush for the family. <laughs> rush for the family. So I'm getting all the apple in. Don't worry if it starts to change colour. It does that once you cut, cut them. Okay, they're not off or anything like that. It just changes its colour because of the acids are released. And you're popping your apple in randomly. They'll all mulch down in the baking process. And get your oven on. I'll put all the temperatures, weights and measurements below. So don't worry about it if you haven't written everything down. You can always just look below. And then we add our sugars and our corn flour. So sprinkle it over like so. Do this last. Add this sugar and cornstarch last. Do, do not do this until you're ready to add your crumble because what will happen is the sugar will macerate your apples and it'll all start to break down and it'll be breaking down too quickly it needs to break down in the oven so I'm just sprinkling all of that over so and I'm going to give it a, a mix like that I'm covering it like so covering the apples in the sugar you can get your hands in at this point but, you know, there we have, there we have it, done and dusted. And we're ready now for our crumble. I'll bring the crumble 
over. You see how beautiful and rich, and that brown sugar added to the crumble does give this rich nuttiness to your mixture. And what you do now is you just sprinkle it over. Now some crumble recipes, you don't have to have this much crumble, you can half the recipe. But I like a lot of crumble. <laughs> my crumble outweighs my apple. <laughs> So if you don't like that and you like more apple, just half the crumble mixture. But I, I love the crumble. I really love it. And make sure you get to the sides because sometimes the apple juices come up from the sides, okay? And uh, get that on. See how beautiful that's looking? Last bit, way empty. And then just very gently, even that over that making sure you get to the sides like that a nice deep thick crumble Mwah! and this is great served hot with custard or cold it doesn't matter or with cream I like it with cream but uh, each to their own so this is going to go into preheated oven again the temperatures will be set below for about 30 minutes I'll be right back Okay, let's get this out of the oven. Oh. Ooh, bring it over here. Oh, piping hot, piping hot. This has been in the oven for about 30 minutes and it's smelling so good. Good enough to eat. <laughs> and what I'll do now is I will just uh, let that to cool off and I'll probably serve it later on in the day. Um, with some fresh cream. Mm -mm -mm. As I say, this is a perfect, perfect uh, dish to make because it's very simple and easy. But more importantly, it does actually taste divine. Divine. So please, thumbs up. Any comments, please um, comment below and I'll be happy to reply. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.